Imagine living in a town where every mention of your home induces giggles, raised eyebrows, or outright bewilderment. From Dildo to Vulcan, some of Canada's town names are doing just that, causing a mix of amusement and disbelief. But what happens when the Initia Lofter Fades? Today, we're unveiling the 10 most unusually named places in Canada and the impact these names have on the residents, tourism, and the legacy of these communities. So before we hit the road on this bizarrely named journey, remember to hit that subscribe button and let's dive into the stories, controversies, and unexpected delights that these distinctive designations deliver. Number 10, Dildo, Newfoundland, and Labrador. When visitors first catch sight of the sign for Dildo, Newfoundland, and Labrador, the response is almost universal. Raised eyebrows, followed swiftly by suppressed smiles or outright laughter. It's an honest reaction to this quaint fishing village whose name has, over time, taken on meanings its founders likely never intended. But rest assured, this is no fictional land. Dildo is as real as the rugged coastlines and friendly faces that define it. The town's name, likely derived from an archaic term for an object or pin keeping the oar in place on a boat, now draws a mix of delight and dismay among residents. Some locals revel in the notoriety, seeing their home transform into a beacon for tourists with a sense of humor or a taste for the unconventional. Others, however, find themselves part of an endless joke, grappling with the polarizing effects on their community's identity. They wonder if the amusement of a few outweighs the potential embarrassment it brings to a place they hold dear. Merchandise emblazoned with the town's name flies off the shelves as visitors scoop up souvenirs to prove they haven't just fallen victim to a gag. This commercialization raises the question, does making money from a name that induces chuckles dilute the dignity of the town and its residents? Or is it simply a shrewd business move in a world that's all too quick to laugh? In Dildo, the line between exploiting a humorous situation and preserving a sense of respectability is as fine as the one that separates sea from sky. Number 9. Swastika, Ontario In the lush landscapes of Ontario lies a town called Swastika, one that inadvertently carries a weighty symbol fraught with historical anguish. The name, drawn from an ancient emblem of prosperity, has taken a sinister twist in the collective consciousness post-World War II. Here, the battle isn't against an external enemy, but an internal struggle of values. Should the town's name, a slice of its history, yield to the overriding contemporary sensitivity that paints the swastika as a symbol of hate? Defying government efforts to rename it to the more palatable Winston, Swastika has pushed back, intent on preserving its heritage. A gold mining town christened long before the swastika was appropriated by the Nazis, locals stand firm in their resolve. This isn't stubbornness, they say, but a stand against letting a dark chapter of world history overshadow a symbol that once spoke to many cultures of good fortune and well-being. The very mention of swastika, Ontario, evokes mixed emotions. Some residents wear the name with a pride untarnished by its controversial association, while others flinch at the burden of explanation it demands. The name stirs a dichotomy, a community pride intertwined with an inevitable shadow, a steadfast commitment to heritage clashing with the desire to live free from the unsolicited stigma of a globally recognized symbol of oppression. Number 8. Stoner, British Columbia Nestled within the rugged beauty of British Columbia, lies a little town with a name that's bound to spark more than just interest. Stoner, as you can guess, has become an instant hit on social media and among certain circles, eliciting chuckles and raised eyebrows in equal measure. To some, there's a sense of pride attached to the name, tapping into the chill and laid-back stereotype often associated with cannabis users. To others, it's a moniker that might just be a little too on the nose, especially in professional settings. Where do you stand on Stoner's titular pride? Since Canada's legalization of cannabis, Stoner's name has taken on new layers of relevance and potential. There's no denying the curiosity factor it has stirred among the green tourism market, 
with some travelers adding it to their must-visit lists just to snap a photo of the signpost. The town's image has been involuntarily hitched to this legal wave, for better or worse, becoming an offbeat symbol within the national conversation about cannabis culture and legislation. But has this association affected Stoner for the better, or has it clouded the town's true identity under a haze of giggles and notoriety? Caught at the crossroads of commercial success and communal respectability, Stoner's name controversy encapsulates a larger discussion. With an opportunity to brand themselves in alignment with the burgeoning cannabis industry, the town could capitalize on its name to attract businesses and tourists looking for that perfect blend of nature and counterculture. However, every branding opportunity comes with a potential cost to community values. As laws change and society's views on cannabis evolve, Stoner finds itself wrestling with a question many towns named long before these issues arose now face. Should its name be its flagship or its folly? Number 7. Punky Doodles Corners, Ontario Nestled in the heart of Ontario, Punky Doodles Corners stirs up more than just curiosity with its whimsical name. The playful moniker whimsically echoes through the streets, beckoning travelers from near and far. It's this very charm that turns heads and drives tourists to this quaint township, eager for a photo op and a tale to take home. This odd name, often attributed to a mischievous innkeeper from the 19th century or to a mispronunciation of Pumpkin Doodle, has indeed become a light-hearted tourist attraction in its own right. But as much as the name Punky Doodle's Corners draws grins and giggles, it begs the question, has the joke been stretched too thin? For citizens trying to maintain a sense of normalcy, there exists a fine balance between a name that attracts a healthy dose of tourism and one that borders on the ridiculous. In council meetings, business introductions, and formal events, the town's name has often raised eyebrows, inciting debates over whether it undermines the community's credibility. To some, it stands as a treasured asset, a testament to the town's unique character. To others, it's an impractical label that toys with the town's dignity. The conundrum continues into the realms of commerce and image. Local businesses wrestle with the town's name on letterheads, marketing materials, and online domains. The notoriety of the name does come with its perks, offering a memorable branding opportunity not easily forgotten. However, this can also attract undue mockery and complicate matters when business dealings stretch beyond the region's borders. In a global economy where first impressions count, Punky Doodles Corners grapples with the duality of its legacy. Is the township to be taken seriously or simply chuckled at before moving on? Number 6. Eyebrow Saskatchewan Imagine living in a place named after a part of the human anatomy. Welcome to Eyebrow, Saskatchewan, where residents are forever framed by the name of their town. The origin of Eyebrow's peculiar name has origins as distinct as the feature itself, supposedly inspired by a nearby hill shaped like, you guessed it, an eyebrow. While some locals are brimming with pride over their town's distinctive name, others can't help but raise an eyebrow at the incessant jokes and puns that naturally follow. One could argue eyebrow is a name that sticks in your mind, whether for better or worse. It's the kind of moniker that could stand out on any map potentially inviting a wave of curious visitors. Yet, for those making a life in eyebrow, does the town's name cause a twitch of annoyance or is it embraced with a sense of humor? After all, who wouldn't want to hail from a place with such an expressive and unforgettable name? The topic of eyebrow's name branches into a discussion of marketing opportunities, a missed opportunity perhaps. With a name like eyebrow, the town could grab the spotlight maybe even becoming the face of quirky tourist destinations. Or would that be giving in to novelty, reducing Ibro's rich heritage and sense of community to a branding stunt? The residents of Ibro must weigh the benefits of capitalizing on the town's unique name against the potential loss of their authentic identity beneath the gloss of tourist-centric commercialization. Number 5. Vulcan, Alberta Nestled in the expansive prairie land of rural Canada, lies Vulcan, a town that's boldly gone 
where no town has typically gone before. It's an oasis for Star Trek enthusiasts, complete with a replica of the Starship Enterprise and an annual convention that draws Trekkies from across the galaxy. The burning question remains, is this a fandom paradise or has the town taken its nerdy homage to the next level of overkill? Vulcan's embrace of its intergalactic ties has sparked a debate that resonates far beyond the borders of its own community. For a town with a name that predates the famed sci-fi series, adopting a pop culture icon as part of its identity has been both a beacon for tourism and a point of contention. Some argue it garners the town the right kind of attention, while others feel it overshadows Vulcan's agricultural roots and the rich history that underpins its true character. The quest for significance is a familiar journey for many small towns like Vulcan, where the allure of the big cities is ever-present, coaxing the youth away and leaving behind challenges of economic sustainability. In Vulcan's case, the entrepreneurial leap into the science fiction realm is a daring stance against the obscurity faced by rural territories. It's a unique strategy aimed at steering the town well into the future. A future where maintaining relevancy isn't just an ambition, it's a survival strategy for the community's lifeline. Number 4. Crotch Lake, Ontario Nestled within the pristine boundaries of Ontario lies Crotch Lake, a name that, on first blush, might cause an uncomfortable squirm or an uncontrollable chuckle. It's the sort of name that sticks in the memory long after you've heard it, which prompts the quandary. Is it a masterstroke of memorability or an unfortunate branding that residents have to endure? The name alone can turn any conversational tide, sparking laughter or a blush at its mere mention and leaving many to wonder whether its origin story is as colorful as it suggests. The idyllic lake could easily be just another dot on the map, overshadowed by more conventionally named locales. Yet its moniker becomes an unexpected hook, reeling in attention from far and wide. In an age where headlines are currency, Crotch Lake draws its own brand of publicity, which, for better or for worse, ensures that it doesn't fade into obscurity. This spotlight, however, opens a perennial debate over the nature of attention it summons. While some subscribe to the notion that all press is good press, others question if the inevitable jokes and snickers are too steep a price for fame. For the residents of Crotch Lake, their home's name is an inescapable conversation starter woven into the fabric of day-to-day -day life and community discourse. Some embrace the humor, leveraging it to carve out a unique identity in a world of ever-competitive tourism. Yet others cloak the name in a mantle of practical resignation, focusing instead on the natural beauty and calm that define their surroundings. They navigate through the layers of meaning and humor attached to Crotch Lake, balancing the curiosity it invokes with the genuine affection for their home, a place where the warmth of community spirit transcends the cold blush of its name. Number 3. Balls Creek, Nova Scotia Tucked away in the picturesque lands of Nova Scotia, Balls Creek might cause a double take or a suppressed chuckle upon first mention. Visitors often find amusement in the name, snapping photos beside the town's sign as a whimsical vacation memory. However, for locals, the initial giggle has long worn off, replaced by a sense of long-term embarrassment. Despite the snickers from outsiders, residents live with a measure of pride, embracing the peculiarity as an inseparable part of their home's identity. As with any place weighed down by a name with suggestive undertones, the citizens of Balls Creek navigate its connotations with a mixture of humor and exasperation. They're accustomed to the inevitable joke when mentioning where they're from, crafting responses that deftly steer the conversation away from laughter to more substantial matters about their charming community. Everyday life proceeds unaffected by the humorous moniker as locals focus on the true essence of their town far beyond just its name. Yet, in the era of instant communication and viral trends, traditional names clash with modern interpretations. What might have been an innocuous geographical designation centuries ago 
now contends with contemporary social media culture, where a name like Balls Creek can quickly become an internet sensation for all the wrong reasons. The town's residents stand at a crossroads, caught between the legacy embedded in their town's name and the shifting sands of language and sensibility that challenge the appropriateness of such historical designations. Number two, Climax, Saskatchewan. The name Climax immediately elicits a range of responses, from a raised eyebrow to an outright chuckle. It's one of those place names that seems more at home in a cheeky comedy sketch than on a road sign. The sexual innuendo is, for some travelers, a source of light-hearted fun, but for the people of Climax, it's an everyday reality. The question remains, is branding their home with a name that doubles as an adult punchline a step too far in humor, or just a harmless quirk that should be embraced with a healthy dose of wit? For the residents of Climax, the constant snickers and jests that come with introductions can become tiresome. Living in a place permanently poised as the butt of the joke has its drawbacks, particularly when outsiders refuse to see past the humorous facade. Should the local people have to reconcile their pride for their town with its potential to turn any conversation into a ribald gag? While some believe it's merely a matter of good fun, others ponder whether it undermines the gravitas of a community simply trying to go about its daily life. Interestingly, Climax faces a unique predicament when it comes to attracting tourists. On one hand, the eye-catching name can propel the town into the spotlight, drawing curiosity and visitors eager for a photo op with the town's sign. On the other hand, the challenge arises in how to market the town for more than just its name, striking a balance between leveraging the notoriety of the name and promoting the town's actual attributes is a delicate task for tourism officers. How does one build a reputable and inviting image for potential visitors when the town's very name suggests a cheeky joke? The people of Climax continue to navigate the fine line between embracing their unusual name as a tourist asset and striving to ensure the humor doesn't overshadow the town's true value. Number one. Head Smashed In Buffalo Jump, Alberta. Not your average town name, Head Smashed In Buffalo Jump immediately strikes a morbid note. However, its origins are steeped in rich indigenous history, where the Blackfoot people used the cliff as a hunting ground by driving buffalo over the edge and subsequently using every part of the animal for survival. Today, it stands as a testament to human ingenuity and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Drawing visitors from around the globe to marvel at this ancient hunting technique captured in the town's powerful name. The visceral image the name conjures up may spark outrage or amusement among those hearing it for the first time. In a world where violence is a delicate subject, the name can leave a sour taste or be dismissed as dark humor. But the reality is that it memorializes an age-old practice that enabled the growth of a culture and community emphasizing a respectful understanding over knee-jerk reactions. It's a balancing act between acknowledging the violence implied in the name and respecting its authentic cultural significance. Highlighting the critical role of preserving indigenous heritage, Head Smashed In Buffalo Jump encapsulates a broader conversation about our readiness to face past practices with modern sensibilities. While some may argue for a name change, others staunchly defend its value in telling the indigenous story as it is, not as we might prefer it to be. It serves as a compelling reminder that history is not always comfortable, but it's always essential, and our recognition of its importance trumps the discomfort the name might cause. Embarking on a journey through towns with unexpected and sometimes provocative names We've seen how these locales grapple with their moniker's implications, drawing both attention and controversy. Locals are often torn between the enjoyment their town's names elicit and the potential for discomfort or distaste. While some embrace the humor and leverage it for tourism and marketing, others debate whether these names overshadow their town's true identity. It's undeniable that places like Dildo and Climax draw curious glances and laughter, 
but behind the initial reactions are communities with their own unique histories and charm. Whether it's Vulcan's interstellar connections or head smashed in Buffalo Jump's deep indigenous roots, each of these destinations has a story to tell, one that goes beyond the surface level giggle their signs might provoke. Undoubtedly, the conversation about these unusual names is ongoing. Do they represent insensitivity or are they a nod to history and cultural uniqueness? Should they be celebrated for their quirkiness or reconsidered to fit modern sensibilities? As society evolves, so too does the interplay between tradition and progress, leaving us all to wonder, what's in a name? Remember, the strength and character of a place are not solely encapsulated by its name, but by the stories of the people who call it home. If you've enjoyed this tour of oddly named locations, consider subscribing to Globe Trekking for more intriguing travel insights and hidden gems. Next up, join us as we explore picturesque villages with names as charming as their scenery. Click on our video to discover the quaintest villages around the world and continue your journey with us.